Selamat datang. Selamat datang semuanya. Ladies and gentlemen, please have a seat and find your seating and we are going to begin shortly. Thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Me is Hermawan Kartajaya, so I will make this short session about one and a half hour, 90 minutes total very informal because I know the ambassador since very long time yeah he is from the bottom to the top now we call him his excellency I know him as a journalist journalist reporter from a daily still number one in Indonesia Kompas if you are familiar with Indonesia, you know that Pak Tommy, Ambassador Tommy, is the ex-chief editor of Kompas. And then he was hijacked. Yeah? Uh, the, the quality people always hijacked by other good television companies. I know the owner also, Pak Surya Palo. Metro TV. And until now, I think Metro TV is number one in news, yeah, and news plus, 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 and now is becoming a very good ambassador of Indonesia in Singapore. And when I dropped by here one year ago, by eh? two years or one year, one year ago, I dropped by here because luckily the ambassador of Indonesia to Singapore is my longtime friend, Pak. Hermawan, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. And then he told me, wow, Indonesia was the chairman of G20. Promoting in Singapore about G20 is very important. And then I still remember long time ago, not long time ago, actually 15 years ago, I did with Andy Lim, who is representing Andy Lim, yeah. Andy Lim from Tembusu Fund. You are representing Tembusu Lim, uh, you must shake hand with uh, ambassador later you must introduce my ambassador with 
Andy, Andy is in, in London, Pak. From Tembu Sufan. Founded, Tembu Sufan founded by Andy and his friend, and also Temasek, I don't know. I'm the advisor of Tembu Sufan in Indonesia. So, you must introduce yourself to ambassador because Indonesia is very important. And at that time, we co-organize a special program in Singapore, not in Indonesia. Hey, Hermawan, please help me. I want to organize something that many Singaporeans want to know Indonesian better. But you must invite mayors and bupati or whatever. And then, this is HK 75, not Hong Kong 75. Hermawan Karta Jaya 75 years old. So, because 75 years old, I know, I know many people. So I invited mayors, I invited whatever, investment, whatever, whatever, whatever. Came to the states in Singapore, you still remember, right? Indonesia, Singapore Forum, whatever, business forum. And he asked me, you know, Hermawan, what is the main theme? The main theme is the rich and the famous. Why? Rich is Indonesia. Ambassador will give you an opening speech and he will tell you how rich is Indonesia. And now nickel is hot. I was meeting nickel, National Nickel Association, all over the world. 420 people from all over the world came to Indonesia because everybody now talking about nickel, 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 EV, EV, EV. And that's why Indonesia is very important. Yeah, rich, but Singapore is famous. The brand of Singapore is very strong. And I just read a book, a very good book called Leadership. So many books about leadership, but this book was authored by Winston Churchill, eh, not Winston Churchill, you know, the, oh, who is the, Henry Kissinger. Still alive, right? Wow, very good book. I recommend you to read that book. Leadership, the real example from the seven leaders of Indonesia in the world, including Lee Kuan Yew. How Lee Kuan Yew, Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew, the father of Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong, built the country. The real leader, and he admired. Wow. So, if you are Singaporean, you are very lucky. Yeah? Last year I was here, and today I was here. I don't know where to go. That's why this morning, all of a sudden, I go to MIS. This from Marketing in Singapore, my, 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 my brother in Singapore. But the, 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 the president was in, in, in Shanghai now, because wife is China. So, only from Sinat Mas has where is the representative from Sinarmas? Oh, I, I just met. Oh, yeah. You have a wife from Indonesia, yeah? Semarang. Ah, Sinarmas, Pak. But my, my brother from marketing of Singapore, you know, I'm a marketing guy. His wife from Shanghai, now he's in Shanghai. So I don't know where to go. Yesterday she told me, Pak. There is something new. What's new in Singapore? I cannot go to only Sentosa Island again and Orchard Road again, again, again. I don't know why. And now hospital in Indonesia is getting better and better. School of Indonesia is getting better, better, better. What else? I don't know what to do in Singapore. To be honest, it's more fun in Indonesia in the night time, yeah? Especially. So that's why last night you are so kind drinking by the river of Singapore and I just choose one drinking place that no, not available in Indonesia, Hooter. Oh, uh, I was drinking one beer with them. Yeah. But you are not drinking last year, uh, yesterday. Yeah? Uh, you are good because you can drink to Hooter every night. I cannot. So the rich and the famous. Today, 
Thank you for coming. We launched the book for the first time globally in WIPO, World International Property Organization. Because I was sponsored by Acre. Acre, if you are Singaporean, you don't know Acre. Acre is number one outdoor clothes in Indonesia. Outdoor. During pandemic time, malls are closed, but they are good. Because people are shifting to outdoors, right? Even President Jokowi like Acre. That's why I, I'm wearing outdoor now. This is MCOP, is my company 33 years ago. We are pioneer and they say that we are still number one marketing consulting, helping Compass also by several projects. And we launched it in Wipo because of friend also. Because of friend. That's why I remember what the ambassador told me. You must promote in Singapore, G20. So that's why I'm coming here after Switzerland, after Geneva. Geneva, wow. I didn't believe that we can launch a book at Geneva. Geneva and WIPO, World Intellectual Property Right Organization. Wow. And then the ambassador told me, Pa Ermawan, you are the concept originator of this model. I've been 25 years with Philip Kotler and I'm always the concept originator. He does not need to be the concept originator. We just learned his name. And we share the royalty. It's good yeah, to be Philip Kotler. Yeah, but not easy, the father of modern marketing. You are the professor of NUS, yeah? Indonesian, but wow, you must be good. I'm not a professor. I'm a fake professor. He is the real professor. Please stand up. Dr. Hui Den Luan. NUS and Dr. Jackie Musri. Jack? Uh, yes. Uh, he has been with me 27 years. I'm lucky to be with him because he is coming from a rich family. He does not need to work with me. But finally, he helped me 27 years. Because maybe our passion is the same. Knowledge. Yeah? So, to make it short, after launching in Geneva, I must come to Singapore. Yeah, in between, we did it in Amsterdam because of Indonesian Embassy also. We did it in Vienna because of Indonesian Embassy because I'm a teacher. I, 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 until now, I, I, I've been teaching in the Minister of Foreign Affairs for many, many times. But Pak Ambassador is not a diplomat. So I never teach him. Don't be, be misunderstand. I cannot write, teach him. He teach me. Yeah. So, Welcome again, and 90 minutes will be fun. I, I promise you, after opening speech by Ambassador, and then Jackie will speak about 15 minutes, and then Professor Witten One will speak about 15 minutes, and I will close the session about 20 minutes. So, Pak Tommy, please. So Indonesia very blessed have a person like Pak Hermawan, very multi-talented person. He's not only very productive book writers, but, but also he's a very good MC and entertainer. So Pak Hermawan Kartajaya, founders and chairman of Marketing Corps Indonesia, Pak Jeki Musri, CEO Mart Plus Incorporated, Professor Hu Den Huan, Associate Professor of Marketing, Nanyang Business School, NTU, all participants 
Good afternoon to all of you. For me, this afternoon is like a reunion because I have so many times very long not met with the Pak Hermawan and also Pak Jackie Musri. Pak Hermawan, I have already mentioned that I have so many projects when I was in Compass. But beside Compass, we also have a same item task at that time when we are asked by Minister of Trade to become a steering committee for Indonesian good design. So at that time, I'm with Pa, with pa Hermawan, is trying to set up the organization, the panel of jury of the Indonesian good design, and one of the members of the, the panel of jury is Jackie Musri. So that's why for me is like the uh, reunion. So thank you for coming to the book launch and discussion of the latest publication of Pak Hermawan Kertajaya and team, Entrepreneurial Marketing Beyond Professionalism to Creativity, Leadership and Sustainability. Entrepreneurial marketing is an integral part of any business strategy. It requires a proactive orientation, innovativeness, focus on customer, utilization of opportunity, risk management, and value creation in order for an interactive marketing approach to be successful. It is also a vital component of entrepreneurship which emphasizes the customer as the primary force behind business success. Entrepreneurial marketers must have fresh idea, productive, and advanced techniques in marketing. Pak Hermawan Kartajaya has been known as Indonesian authors and speaker in the field of marketing studies and has written so many top marketing books, including the books that we are going to discuss today. Pak Hermawan has already mentioned this is the 11 books that have already written by Pak Hermawan. This book explores the increasingly essential initiative to build new capabilities beyond the mainstream marketing approach and discuss with marketers need to do to break the stagnation of normative marketing approaches that are often no longer effective in dealing with dynamic business environment. This afternoon, we will hear how the authors introduce a fresh entrepreneurial marketing approach, converging dichotomies into a coherent form, share post entrepreneurial marketing views of the commercial landscape, have discussion of the strategies and techniques that will drive the action of the marketing department to create values with values that will lead the company to success. And also explore the paradox between the development of core competence and collaboration with various parties, including competitors. That is why the book, Entrepreneur Marketing Beyond Professionalism to Creativity, Leadership and Sustainability is a must read for every professional marketer entrepreneur and business leader worldwide. I believe that we will have an eye-opening and fruitful discussion of the future of marketing from the leading minds in the marketing field. I thank you.
Thank you Pak Tommy, Ambassador, uh, His Excellency. Now, after the left side, now the right side. So, <laughs> rotated a little bit, twisted a little bit, because he will talk about the build-up of this book, yeah? And uh, after that, Jackie. So, please welcome Dr. Hui Ten Wan. So, firstly, good afternoon, everyone. I would like to say thank you very much to Park Tommy, to Park Jufi, and all the colleagues at the Indonesian Embassy for very kindly hosting this event. I also like to thank all my colleagues, former colleagues, Kairu, for example, and, um, and also all the associates and friends as well, Yi Ting, and uh, at the uh, Nanyang Bis colleagues at both Nanyang Business School at NTC, uh, and of course, our entrepreneurial friends, uh, Joseph, uh, Yen Po, Ivan, also thank you so much for, for joining, and uh, Jackie, and also, of course, uh, last but not least, very importantly, my wife and my daughter have joined me as well. So they've been great, great support. Thank you. Yeah. So what, we what I'm going to do is that in these 15 minutes, I will talk about the build-up to entrepreneurial marketing. Because when we came out with this book, Entrepreneurial Marketing, it did not come out just overnight. Uh, it was laid on the foundation. Foundation after foundation. So some of the foundations, very important foundations, were not laid by us. It was laid by our gurus, predecessing gurus. So let me just um, move to the slide. Uh, in fact, this morning, I was still finalizing my slide and decided to craft my own quotation because I recognize that in this audience, we have experts from many areas, like Kit Wai is a lawyer, for example, so we cannot claim that marketing is the most important. So sustainable success is actually due to many disciplines. But arguably, marketing is definitely one of the critical disciplines. And this is very, very important because if we look from the case of uh, what Jack Welch says, when the rate of external change exceeds the rate of internal change, the end is near. So this actually provided the impetus for us to keep changing. And just to give us the background, I will move on to the next slide. So to give us the background very quickly, um, when we first started in the days of the Industrial Re Revolution, the focus was on production efficiency. So that was the focus. But gradually, the market realized that actually just efficient production is not enough. We need to have a good product. So when we talk about a good product, what we mean is product-centric. In other words, businesses realize that being efficient in production alone is not enough. You need to have a good product. So then the product-centric era started. And what they say is that build a better mousetrap and the world will be the path to your door. In other words, with a good product, you can almost be assured of success. But soon this became a fallacy. In other words, a superior product will not automatically guarantee success. And what I'm just trying to show is that all of us, we need to continuously innovate, continuously change because the world is changing. So a good product alone is not enough. And that's why then if we move to the next step, and this is the famous four piece of marketing, and these were developed by a professor, Jerome McCarthy. So what he says is that if you want to capture the market, you do not, you need to have not only a good product, but you must have the relevant price, promotion, and place. So those were the famous, famous four Ps. And as time evolves, that shows that it's still not enough. So what we call is that you need to have 
uh, apart from product centric, you need to be customer centric. So what is the difference is product centric is really where a company makes a product and appeal to the customers, please, won't you buy it? But again, this is not enough. There's another school of thought and that other school of thought is what we call customer-centric. And customer-centric means from marketing to develop further, we need to look at the customer's perspective. And from a customer-centric point of view, it's a plea from the customers. This is what I want. Won't you please make it? So as we can see, actually marketing has to change. In other words, from an inside-out perspective, we also need an outside-in. Not only one perspective, but both perspectives. And what is interesting then is that if we look at the four piece of marketing, whenever we ask anybody about marketing, they will always say product, price, place, promotion. But when we look at it, actually what a customer wants is really a solution not just a product. And this is interesting. That's why if we look at some successful examples like Harley Davidson, what Harley Davidson says is that they don't only sell a product. What they are saying is that they are selling a dream. And something which actually could help broaden our mind. And if we look at IBM as another example, some people always think that IBM is successful because they provide the best product. But IBM is successful. Their product may not be the latest, may not be the most innovative, but they provide the best solution. In other words, they provide the support if your system fails and so on. So marketing has evolved. From the four piece of marketing, what we are saying is that don't just provide a good product but more importantly, provide a good solution. Don't only think about place, but think about access for your customers. And don't only think about what we call price. When you charge, always think about value to your customers. And last but not least, when we think about promotion, don't only think about how to promote our product, but it's how to educate the market. So this is interesting because if we look at it, Body Shop is arguably one of the earliest social enterprises and I have a lot of respect for Anita Roddick. And I remember, Hermawan, you were actually constantly messaging Anita Roddick before, unfortunately, her very sudden death. But she is really amazing. So she always believed that it is important to educate the customers if you, are, if you have a product that is new. That's why then the four piece of marketing changed. Instead of just the four piece product price, please promotion, today we talk about safe, solution, access, value, and education. And what is interesting is that just as we thought that, wow, we have found the answers to marketing, then Kotler came along and says, it is no longer enough to satisfy customers. We need to delight them. And in order to delight our customers, then it's important we must also know other concepts such as segmentation, targeting, positioning. This was what I learned in 1974 my first year in marketing. And when I met Philip Kotler, I told him that I used your book in 1974 and he told me then that would be seven years too late because he wrote his book in 1967. And he was the one who brought in a lot of these concepts. But until I met Hermarwan, I always look at all these concepts separately. And wow, when I came to know him, I learned about this concept of marketing. In other words, don't, do just, don't just do marketing, but do marketing. And what is marketing? So what he says is that all these concepts can be tied together. I have never seen anything like this until I met all the colleagues from Mark Plus. 
In other words, what we are saying is that if you want to win the marketing war, you need to capture the mind share of the customers. Segmentation, targeting, positioning should be linked. You need to capture the market share. Marketing mix, differentiation as well as selling. And you need to capture the heart of the customers. So it was through Mark Plus, through Herma One that I learned that all these marketing terms can be linked together. And that is yet another further involvement of marketing. And this is what we call the marketing architecture. But what is also very important is that with these two gentlemen, they are my teachers. I learned that actually what is very important is that as any business person, including marketers, we need to be aware of the environment. And the environment comprises four Cs. What are these four Cs in the environment? So what is important is mark, do marketing, sense and respond to changes in the market. And the four Cs in the market is, this is by another author, and the four Cs of the marketing means then that you need to look at who are the customers in the industry? Who are the competitors? What are the changes in the market? And yourself as the company. And it's also very important, marketing is not just marketing to pe your customers. We need to take into account various stakeholders, whether if it's NGOs, whether if it's banks and everything. So when we were to put all these three together, the four Cs, the architecture, as well as the scorecard, that's why then we came out with this marketing model. As I mentioned, all credit goes to Mark Plus. Uh, for me, I, what I only did was to help them do the photocopying and so on. So with this marketing model, then together with Professor Philip Collar, Hermavan and Sandra Liu, we wrote our first book. So subsequently, two other books also were based on these concepts, marketing model. ASEAN, since we are, this event is held in the Indonesian Embassy, ASEAN is very, very, very important. I think we'll all recognize about that. But what is interesting is that soon we find that actually marketing is good, but not good enough. Why? Because the world is digitalizing. I mean, the world that is digitalized, people are better connected. Not only are people better connected, people have access to more information. And people are more sociable. I belong to a generation whereby last time, if we have anything personal, we will record on a diary, a book. And we will be very upset if somebody were to read our diary. I can tell you, very, very upset. But today, for the young, they always like to share with the whole world through the social media. They will be very upset if you don't read what they write. So the world has really changed tremendously. And if the world has changed, then marketing alone is not enough. That's why together with Mark Plus, with her Mawan, then we came up with yet another new model. And what is this new model? This new model recognizes that the world has a social connector. And what then it means is that the traditional marketing, the fundamental marketing is no longer enough. We need to have the new wave marketing. My time is a bit limited because of the 15 minutes, but I'll be sharing more in our launch in, in Kuala Lumpur uh, because there will be a seminar on that day. But just to let you know that so marketing has changed. And with new wave marketing, we capture these in our later pub publications. Um, marketing for competitiveness, the Asian competitors, as well as in 2021, Philip Kotler and I fully recognized the contributions of Mark Plus and Herma One. So that's why both of us wrote a book, especially as a tribute to Mark Plus to celebrate its 30th anniversary. By the way, I'm promoting Mark Plus not, not for anything. I, don't, I can guarantee you that 
from Pahama one, I have not got any material benefit. In fact, every time I go to Jakarta, I always have to pay myself or unless it's part of the official delegation. So that's why I told Pahama one, I'm retiring in July, so you will be seeing less of me already. Okay. And um, so what happened is that we really came out with this book in 2021 to recognize Mark Plus and, and the contributions of that. And then last but not least, the world is changing. I call the environment root. We are living in a root environment. Rapidly changing, uncertain, dynamic and engaging. And in a root environment, we need to be more innovative and entrepreneurial. Professor Fumoda, who is the director of the Nanyang Technopreneurship Center, I'm sure will fully agree and all my colleagues there, the entrepreneurial entrepreneur thinking is very, very, very uh, important. So we fully agree with that. And that's the reason how then this gives birth to entrepreneurial marketing. Now, the real expert for entrepreneurial marketing is Jackie. That's why we have decided to leave everything to Jackie to tell you, to share with you more about that. But I just want to mention this is what Jackie will be sharing. Okay? And I would like to end my talk with just a few quotations which I feel is so important. So the gist of entrepreneurial thinking is challenge conventional thinking, conserve those still relevant, change those that need modifications and create new ones where applicable. So the world is changing, are you? And if you are not one step ahead, you are two steps behind. This is what Jack Welch says. And Gandhi says you must be the change you wish to see in this world. Given that this event is held in Singapore, allow me to share also with what our Deputy Prime Minister says, to meet the challenges of globalization, the next generation must be both innovative and entrepreneurial. And this is universal. It's not just Singapore. In every country, beyond, whether you are Singaporean, Indonesian, Malaysian, Vietnamese, Chinese, American, or any, this is something that we will really need. And last but not least, the greatest respect to the father of marketing. No matter what we say, no matter what model we use, I fully, you know, in 1974, this was the definition he used for marketing. Two years ago, 2021, I wrote to Kotler, can you please let me know what is your definition of marketing? And I was just so astounded. This is evergreen. In other words, for marketers, it is to create, communicate, and deliver promised value. So I would like to pass to Jackie D, who will share with us about entrepreneurial marketing. Thank you. Ben, thank you so much. I always like your session because he's the real professor. He can simply explain about the history of marketing. Actually, you are bachelor of marketing already, if you listen to him, yeah? So you must be proud to be the wife of Dr. Witten. Please stand up. Please stand up. The original Singaporean girl, this, he was born in Ipoh, but he is Singapore citizen now. Now, Dr. Jackie Musri. Thank you, Pai Hermawan. Good day, everyone, and Excellency, very happy to borrow this room. This is a, truly a luxury for us. And thank you, uh, Marketing Institute of Singapore, and everybody. Uh, welcome, to, uh, welcome to Indonesia. <laughs> I would say like that. Okay, writing this book is crazy, I would say like that, because I have to deal with two professors. One is more than enough for me. This is two, okay? The other one is a very senior professor, you know, Philip Coulter, very senior, and he's asking why more than the Japanese asking why to me. Why this, why this, up to like 12 whys, okay? Every and each of uh, the paragraph and everything. That's number one. Number two, I deal with uh, Pak Hermawan Kartajaha. He is a super, super demanding person. Very demanding, okay? 
I don't know why, but this is very demanding. Like there's no tomorrow for him. It has to be now or yesterday, something like that. That's very tough. The third one, I have to deal with Professor Huidan Wan. Academicians, Singaporean. Very meticulous. He would be willing to send me an email just to ask, why don't you use the word and instead of or? Okay, and I have to spend one week to think about it, okay? So, but it's really fun. It's, you know, writing this because beyond, uh, uh, you know, I, I just, you know, I just a student at that time reading uh, Philip Kotler's book, textbook, and I have to write with him. That's really an honor for me. And that's number one. Number two, um, it's really beyond, uh, it's crazy. It's beyond my, the way, uh, you know, the one that I wrote uh, for my uh, PhD papers, all the dissertation and everything. It's really crazy. It's really a learning process. So I just want to, uh, uh, what you call it, give a summary of what's inside the book. So this is the essence of entrepreneurial marketing. So I, you see the word uh, converging dichotomies. So a lot of things, not on one side, it's like over then over here, we have to converge that. That's the challenge in dealing with the uh, new business landscape, a very dynamic business landscape now. So it's finally available. I'm not telling you it's available. It's finally available. Because it's really tough to write this book. It's not 100% perfect. But again, we cannot wait until something is perfect. We have to launch it before we lose the momentum. We have, uh, you know, and, you know, something new will come up and so on and so on. And why we wrote this book? According to IMF, this is, what, this is what, what really happened now and in the future. It will be more uncertain, more gloomy, that's according to IMF. And this is what we call post-normal era. We already passed with a new normal, with the next normal. We're now in a, what we call it post-normal. And to deal with this post-normal, we cannot just rely on what we call it professional approach on marketing. Every company in the world can survive uh, the pandemic, the crisis due to the pandemic, because they're not working professionally. They are very entrepreneurial. Have a meeting at 10 p.m. You're calling your team at 2 a.m. That's very unprofessional, but that's the way it is. And then that's why we think we have to combine two things, professional clusters, professional characteristics, and entrepreneurial mindset. And this is very tough. It's not that as easy as we thought. This is the weapon for us to go to move on into what we call the next curve towards 2025, 2030, and beyond. So we need new capabilities. We need new capabilities because, you know, we, can, we see that uh, the world is very fast, changing, very dynamic, just like Professor Hui explained to you uh, before. And we have what we call the marketing blind spots. What is this? This is like, you know, a condition which company has carried out the rice marketing management process properly, but this is the thing. It does not realize that there are still many connect, unconnected elements in that company. And this has hampered the company of being very competitive, losing its competitiveness. And sometimes marketers were ignoring the macro environment. Sometimes we ignore that because, ah, Marketing is, you know, micro environment. We just focus on that. No, anything happened in a micro environment will affect what happened in a micro environment. This is number one. Number two, this is very classic marketing blind spot. Never marketing and finance can talk properly. Not to mention integrated, right? Because most of marketers, they learn how to measure their marketing performance. Mostly they're using what we call it the non-financial KPIs. They're very proud if, you know, somebody said, oh, our brand equity is like this. Our customer satisfaction is like this. Loyalty index. Those, those kind of mumbo jumbos, right? So if those marketing guys talking to the finance guy, for instance, like, you know, uh, sir, I need some money to, you know, put some billboard on Orchard Road, something like that. And of course, the finance guy will ask you, what for? Right? What for? Hey, you know what? If we put that billboard, it will create strong awareness. Our image, blah, 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 and so on. This finance guy, and that's what for? I said, just give me the money. Okay, look, I have lots of money here. You can use it. Free cash flow, put it that way. But just tell me one thing. Can you tell me how much is going to be the return 
and when. And when you ask that to the marketing team, all of a sudden, click, 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 they don't know how to answer. Most, the closest financial KPIs in marketing is sales, right? Sadly, sales is on top of the income statement. But what we need as a shareholder is the bottom line, where we have the annual meeting and we decided how much we have to, be, to uh, you know, give it as a dividend and as a retail earnings. So this is a very huge problem. If you are a marketer and you don't understand finance, you will never be a CEO. So this is the biggest uh, blind spot. Of course, this harmonious marketing and sales, I can tell you later on about this, integration about online and offline, this is also another problem. Overlooking human capital. And this is the most uh, thing that really happened in marketing, lack of humanity. We're just selling product, just like Professor Hui said, and make profit, just cash in, period. We don't care about the environment, we don't care about poor people, we don't care about the global warming. That's you know, the department of some, something in your country, in your uh, government to deal with, not us. So this is the issue. And this is continuing what Professor Hui said, marketing versus market, marketing. In a simple way, you can uh, you know, uh, define it as dealing with the ever-changing or dynamic market, right? But this is what happened. This is marketing. If you see on the uh, uh, right side, very conservative, old school. It doesn't mean old school is bad, okay? And uh, tired, not evolving that fast, outdated, and they have to compete with market. So you see a very fundamental paradox. You call it marketing, but you cannot use it to deal with the market. This is amazing. What I'll see in the textbook right now, if I compare it with the last the, the 20 years ago, it's almost the same. They just add a little bit about, okay, internet, the social media, blah, blah, blah. But most of lecturers in the classroom if somebody nowadays asking you this question, Professor, let me ask you one thing. How to calculate the cost per click? And how you relate that with what we call it, the, you know, the click-through rate, blah, blah, blah. Bounce rate of your email. Uh, some professor might like, you know, mm, well, excuse me, I can uh, you know, answer that question later on because they have to check first whether it's in journal or not. And if they don't find it in journal, uh, you know, they have to wait for articles, something like that, to use it as a reference. So this is a very serious issue. Next, because of that, we have to build the ability to converge so many dichotomies, including marketing and finance in the organization. And two clusters of uh, capabilities is, uh, uh, are entrepreneurial mindset and professionalism. If you you're, don't have professionalism, you are very weak in entrepreneurship. You become like SMEs. Most SMEs, they cannot survive because they're like zombies. Just follow this, follow that, and sometimes stops. That's it. This is SMEs, right? Zombie, like, okay, sometimes they open, sometimes they're not, sometimes they're selling. Sometimes you call them, somebody pick up the phone, sometimes, sometimes not. Because, you know, they don't have entrepreneurship. In Indonesia, I met thousands of SMEs. I think what happened, because the government really support them, but why they cannot survive? And I asked to myself, maybe they are not entrepreneur. Maybe they are just producer. You can produce something, put it on the shelf and wait. That's not entrepreneurship. And if they can sell very well, they, cannot, they don't really institutionalize their business. So they don't have entrepreneurship and they don't have professionalism. We call it zombie. And most uh, uh, startups, they are very keen to do this, very creative, very fast, change this, change, change that. But why they cannot survive? They say because they don't have, they're not professional. Out of a thousand of startups, maybe only two, three really survive. And this is, I call those startups like uh, vigorous dwarf. Very vigorous, but you know, stay small forever. And this is huge companies. They're losing the entrepreneurial mindset, the unborn spirit of the founder. They're becoming too professionalized. So if a problem on Friday evening, 
This is what they're going to say. Okay, let's wait, uh, you know, uh, on Monday morning. We set up a meeting on Monday morning because we are professionals. No, cannot like that. You have to set up a meeting that night, that evening, and solve the problem by Saturday morning. That's if you own your company. Okay? And so that's why we have to shift to what we call it Omnistar, which is to be more professional and more entrepreneurial. And this is the model, I'm going to bore you up with this. I just want to show you that we have the first cluster over here. This is what we call it the creativity, innovation, entrepreneurship, and leadership. And this is another cluster where if you converge productivity, improvement, uh, professionalism, and management. And we see this, what Professor has uh, have, uh, explained before, has explained before. The dynamics of the uh, macro environment with all the drivers, which is going to be the fundamental for us, fundament, foundation for us to build up our strategy. And from those, what happened in the a, in a, in a, uh, business environment, we use our creativity and converge that to innovation. But at the same time, we have to make sure that we're using our capital productively and make sure we give solutions to the customers and create what we call it improvement in our margin, which is reflected later on in the balance sheet and income statement. And we have strategy. We're going to use this strategy to, we're going to implement that using entrepreneurial approach with strong leadership, but at the same time, we have to build professionalism and have a result-oriented management, and this will affect our cash flow. It will create cash flow. And one fine day, it will create a very strong market value in the company. So this is the model. And you see marketing, it's like, you know, on the opposite side of uh, finance. And you see technology, it's also opposite uh, with humanity. We have to converge technology and humanity. Quite controversial in this model, if you are a, you know, marketing-oriented people, person, you know, you're going to put marketing at the center of the model and the rest will follow. No, you put operations. So it's very hard to deal with Philip Coulter to make sure that, you know, no, we're not going to put marketing at the middle, at the center of the model. Operations should be the center of the gravity in this, what we call it, Omni House model. And we can combine those positioning, differentiation, and brand. As you know that in marketing, we have only three uh, capabilities that we have to uh, build. Customer management, as Professor we has explained before, segmentation, targeting, position, and, and so on. We have to build what we call it the, the capability of product management and brand management. Those sim are simplifying the whole thing about marketing. And if you choose a position in a the market, then you you become a risk, uh, you, you become an opportunity seeker. You see opportunity. No, this is not the right position because a lot of competition, you, you, you know, that's positioning. And this is one of the most uh, obvious criteria, character of uh, entrepreneur. And you create differentiation. You take risk. But again, people sometimes forget that, you know, uh, taking risk is not only taking risk, but a calculated risk. If you take risk without a good calculation, you're not a good entrepreneur. You're speculating. Let's do it now and see what happens tomorrow. That's not entrepreneurial mindset. And last one, your branch, as uh, Professor Prudhi has explained before, you should you know, put your brand in a very big network, put it in the business ecosystem, connect with everyone. And on top of that, you collaborate with other brands, including your competitors, and not just harnessing what we call it, you know, competitive advantage built through your value chain in your company, but harnessing what we call it the ecosystem advantage. This is how to survive in the future. Because you cannot face the world very, uh, uh, what you call it, scary world like this uh, all alone. And again, the approach is not only from input, with intangible uh, resources, with tangible resources and production product, to create output, no, but we have to move further to what we call it outcome and finally impact. So input, output, outcome, impact. Input, output is easy, but to create outcome, you have to deal with what we call it the supply chain and everything integrated, and to create what kind of impact, you have to be part of the business ecosystem. So the future of company will be more digitalized. You know that as Professor has explained before, 
Morpheus players. They're very tough to deal with. And it's becoming left of play playing field everywhere. Right? So from a small uh, warung in Indonesia, they can compete now with McDonald's. From the Sate Padang, they can compete with uh, Pizza Hut. That's crazy. And those big guys, they're taking it seriously. That's why now in Indonesia, in, can, uh, in uh, McDonald's, they sell what we call it, ayam goreng kremes sambal mata. McDonald's. And Pizza Hut, they're selling pizza with rendang. So this is crazy. Donor kebab, they sell donor kebab. They also have ayam geprek. It's a very traditional food of Indonesia. You can buy it everywhere on the street. So they can get serious. It's now becoming more contextual. So it's the level playing field. And it's harder to differentiate. And if you cannot differentiate, you die, period. Okay? And faster pace of definitely. And we have stronger interdependency within the ecosystem, especially the digital ecosystem. So what's next? Of course, we have to unify all the capabilities we have in the organizations. This is very important and it's, very, it's easy to set, easier to set than done because we have so many challenges inside the organization. Converging all those mindsets within an organization, also a very tough uh, call for us. And we have to build what we call it omni capabilities, both on the individual level up to the corporate level, focusing on creativity, innovation, uh, entrepreneurship and leadership. That's the CL capability, CIEL, and also the PIPM productivity, all those things we have to build it. So it's really a tough call for most companies in the world. And of course, creating a strong relationship between marketing and finance department. This is a must to integrate marketing and finance. And of course, balancing technology and humanity. Uh, you know, we cannot reap most of, uh, you know, things in, in daily life. We cannot just replace it with technology. We have to do like something, you know, direct meeting because, you know, we're human. So. And balancing, this is very tough. Our next book will be focusing on post-operational excellence. Meaning what? You have to balance between the rigidity of your organization, rigidity of the regulation, rigid. Rigidity of your kitchen in McDonald's or Kentucky Fried Chicken with flexibility, just like what example I, I, I told you before. So balancing rigidity and flexibility is very important. All the scholars know about the concept of uh, strategic flexibility, dynamic capabilities, marketing ambidexterities, all those stuff. Now it's becoming much more relevant than, than ever. So we call this uh, the post-operational excellence. But some notes, we have to keep in mind that, you know, this is the main obstacles in, ob obstacles in the company. Starting from resistance from one person to one group. And that's at the end of the build, the inertia of the organization. So this is, this is the thing. And of course, bringing down silos is a must. Uh, bureaucracy, and this is essential to, for us to stay relevant, you know, survive, with, with good survivability and sustainability. So those things will create more agility in our company, but that's not enough. Agility without flexibility is nothing. But at the end of the day, if you have agility and flexibility, there's a pandemic, there's a crisis, whatever the crisis, maybe the Ukraine, South, uh, uh, Russia world will create another crisis to the world, we don't know yet. But then your company will just tumbling down. That's why you need what we call it resiliency. Resilient meaning you're not bouncing up and back to the normal point, but you have to be better than before. If you just come back to the same level as before, that's not resilient. So this is agility, flexibility, resiliency. And now companies, they don't need employees, they need talents. The era of human resources is over already. We have what we call it human capital, it's over already. Now we have what we call it talent management. Before you recruit them, you have to see whether that guy has a similar values with your company, mirroring to your, the principle of your company. So we cannot just recruit someone and build them. We have to recruit someone. We have to recruit someone that already mirroring to the company. So it's easier saving so many uh, uh, time for us to build the the uh, uh, what you call it, the culture in the company. So we don't need more employees. We need talent. 
That's why we have now what we call it talent management. So I welcome you all to the next curve and thank you so much. So good, eh? Jackie used to go to Australia for studying, but the real PhD from University of Indonesia. Dr. Hui went to Manchester, the real PhD in it. Me, <laughs> I want to change for my English and I will go abroad for schooling. And even I fail in Bachelor of Engineering. Yeah. So <laughs> I'm a failure education in, 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 in formal education. But I used to be the advisor to the president of NUS for five years. I don't know why. And then, uh, and and also, uh, I'm also in the board of trustee of uh, University of Indonesia for five years. And now I'm in the board of whatever they want, whatever the advisory board for the Minister of Education. And we started at four fifteen, not four o'clock. Must be finished at 5.30, but please allow me to finish at 5.45. Yeah, little bit delay. And don't worry, uh, don't, not don't worry, please buy the book over there. No free book. I only have one book for the, oh, oh this is your book, yeah? For the ambassador only, I sign. So this is not my book. This is a uh, Wiley book. So I was paid small royalty. I don't care. Even I'm the concept originator. The most important is the idea spreading all over the world. And this is very important. Launch in Indonesian embassy. I'm proud to be Indonesian. Thank you. I will sign later. So that is the Wiley stand. They don't display only for free, but they sell it. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So my job is very easy now because everything, every important thing already, already explained. So I use Punokawan Spirit in Digital because this Punokawan. I told the ambassador, you cannot find this Punokawan. Bagong Petruk Garing Semar. Semar is the father. He are sent by God. They are sent by God. Based on Indonesian belief, sent by God to help the three sons. Bagong is the symbol of creativity because he is comedian. All comedian in US TV station. Stand alone, especially stand alone. It's the smart guy. Only smart guy becoming only creative guy. Idea, 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 idea. So many idea, and all of a sudden. And Petro, long nose, long nose is a symbol of innovation. And for us, it's different creativity and innovation. If you buy the book, <laughs> you know. That creative is just idea. But innovation, if you test the idea and becoming solution, like Balinis, Balinis, he created welcoming dance, like Kecha, yeah? Kecha dance. Not, not Kecha, the, with fire and everything. What is it? Kecha, yeah? Kecha, cha, 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 and it's, Original version is two hours. <laughs> Creative. But the European guy came to Bali. Oh, you cannot sell this two hours, not a solution of the customer. Let, is, let us shorten it into 15 minutes. They sell it. Solution. It's very different from creative and innovation. So, Bareng without Petro is nothing. So all creative ideas must be tested, experimented. It's better or not though, than competitor. If not better, don't sell it. So many, 
startup fail because they are thinking that they are the most creative man in the world. Uh, however, if you don't have entrepreneur, the innovation will not go anywhere, anywhere, because only small, small scale, right? When you are creator and you need you, and finally you becoming innovator because you have test, 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 test with small sample. If there is no investor to come. There is no investor to see the opportunity and want to take risk and want to collaborate with you. you know? So entrepreneur is very important. But finally, leader. Semar, the father must guide all the son and the symbol of entrepreneur is caring caring is why we take caring because caring from the story is you want everything you want the world uh, that is entrepreneur sometimes so the father must have wisdom to limit hey, you cannot have all if you try to Target all segment, you will die also. In marketing, your segmentation targeting. So the values is here. This is the value. You must create value with values, especially with SDG and everything. You cannot get only profit, chuan, chuan, chuan. But with planet also. Think about planet, think about your people and everything. That's a CL. And CL means sky. I just know that after... I only think by instinct, not by reason. Oh, creative, innovation, and the possibility of CL. And then one day my, my, my friend told me, that is CL. Sky. Oh, very good. Friends, not English. Oh, okay. I continue to work. So that's why I told the ambassador, no, no, no. And he is the only ambassador who watched me, who watched this seminar very closely, very detailed, from business, eh? Compass is business. So I told him, you are the only ambassador who will understand really in detail. So you will be proud, but this is created in Indonesia. Yeah? That's why I need your blessing and need your support. Because you, you said that Indonesia on half of the world, or half of Asia at least, we need your support. Yeah, okay. So, my slide is not so many. This is all the 11 book that I work with Philip Hotter. Some of the book, you see within one name here. And this is the first book when I met him in Moscow for the first time, 1998. So now I've been working with him 25 years. So I, I introduced my model to him. Ah, very simple, Hermawan. Yeah, because I'm not a professor, I'm not a PhD, and my English is not good. So I can only simplify the complex thing. Many professors, not you, complicate the simple thing. <laughs> so he's like laughing. Oh, let's work with me, because Indonesia crisis, Asia crisis at that time, and he did not believe that Asia will revive. I told him. I convince him, believe me, Asia will be back and even better. 1998, in Moscow, we were invited by Russian Marketing Federation because at the time I'm the president of Asia Pacific Marketing Federation and nobody wanted to be the president of APMF because of MIS, Chiong Kun Pui, the late Chiong Kun Pui, the president of Marketing of Singapore. And you must think, huh? Indonesia is the crisis hit country. So now I know that crisis is way chi, right? Way chi and chi, way dangerous, but opportunity. That is entrepreneur and there's a difference from entrepreneur and professor. Professor always, ah, threat, threat, threat. That's why in pandemic also, COVID, some people becoming richer, right? And this is the Marketing 5.0, 3.0, 4.0, 5.0. We will continue with 6.0. December this year, another team. Not with Jackie. Jackie will 
continue with EM1, EM2, EM3. Now we started to write EM2 because Wiley already asked us to sign the contract. I told the ambassador we are very proud because the Wiley is very confident that the book will be successful. Because of what? Because we are the only one who promote balancing, integrating with marketing and finance, technology and humanity. The other one is only one. Oh, digital, digital, digital. And the other one, humanity, you are ah, balanced. Yin Yang, we need both sides. That's why best business book in US, marketing 5.0. But this is, now writing deadline is December 1. We start writing. And we are signing soon, but only three because Professor Witten one does not want to be involved in the next project. I told him, actually, you are Professor of Accounting. It will be the new balance shortcut, you know. Balance. 1998, I still remember Philip Kotler asked me, Hermawan, what is your opinion about balance shortcut? Balance shortcut starting at 1992. 1998, I met him in Moscow, and nobody spoke English. My English is not good, but it's okay. Lah. That's why only us talking, wow, luxury times. And then I convinced him that we need, one day we need new balance shortcut. Now the technology came, wow, now it's the time. And I told Philip Cotter, now it's the time, after 25 years. After 25 years working with you, now I will like to propose. And he principally okay, and Wiley okay also. So that's why Indonesia, hopefully, Pak Ambassador, hopefully, please bless me. Please pray for me, because I'm 75 and becoming 76, and I will celebrate my 76th birthday in Wat Saket in Thailand. Becoming monk in one day. Actually, I'm Catholic. <laughs> they say I'm Muslim, Japan Catholic, Catholic friends, because I praise many, many times everywhere that Prophet Muhammad is good. Not so many people, non Muslim, know about Prophet Muhammad, but Prophet Muhammad is realistic. Zero to 25, common person, 25 to 40 is. You must do business, but with honesty. 40 to 63, when he was teaching, becoming prophet. You must do business with honesty. Sorry, 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 not comparing each other, but Jesus, no money, no sex, no power. So the essence of any religion is the same, to be a better person, right? But I praise Islam because Islam, the true Islam, is about the realistic world. Yeah. So, okay, please bless me. And marketing 6.0, the future is immersive. The writing deadline already 31st of May. He won already finished. Now it's just final editing with Wiley. So hopefully December we will have Marketing 6.0, uh, that's Wiley Singapore, Wiley Asia. Don't worry, I keep on thinking, I keep on thinking, and this is about marketing only. But EM will be business, right? Marketing, finance, and everything. Marketing is only top line. And the bottom line is finance. Yeah? The middle line is operation. That is the, that is the, 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 the idea. Wow. Ah. So, this slide is very important. So, Bagong, Petro, Gareng, Semar. The story is coming from India, actually. If you are familiar with Mahabharata, Mahabharata, maybe you don't understand Hindu, and our Bali this Hindu is different from Indian Hindu. The holy book is the same, but there is no punokawan in original story. This is Indonesia. One, two, three, four. We call it punokawan. Punokawan is 
sekawan in bahasa Jawa is fo. Uno kawan. So they are sent by God to guide the Pandawa five. This is the twin. The twin. Nakulo Satewo is the symbol of productivity. The productivity very important. Plus to finance. If you don't have productivity, you are not efficient. But creativity is close with marketing, right? That's why CL is close to marketing and PIPM is close to finance. Arjuna, maybe some of you understand Arjuna. Arjuna always very good in training, training himself to improve the archery. And Bima, professional, professional. In, in, in wayang, in wayang history, this is Pandawa 5, Pandawa 5 is very, very important role. And this is the brother, Yudhishthira, manager. So you know, if you work for a big company, usually you have KPI rigid and everything, right? Rigid KPI. And you just follow the KPI. All the government people usually. So the bigger the organization, the worse. The worse. Usually to productivity, to only improvement. Productivity improvement. Sorry to say, Japanese is good in productivity improvement. They call it Kaizen. That's why we, we will be called by Japan Marketing Association to launch the book. Because we, in the book, comment about Japanese. Why Japanese is not like Korea? Korea is so fast because they are creative and innovative. If you read the ranking of innovative, innovation, which nation is the most innovative? Korea. And yes, if you go to Seoul, you see Han River used to be very dirty about 40 years ago. Now, very clean. And India is very good in entrepreneurial leader. Entrepreneur see opportunity. Oh. Oh, oh. India talk, 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 talk. They are thinking that they are God, right? Some Indians here? Okay. One friend of mine, Singaporean, did research. India, Malay, and Chinese. Chinese money, money, money. They don't care about everything. You die, bring money. They don't need to be well known. But India know how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a leader, leader, CEO of whatever, CEO, dean, whatever, whatever. Your ex dean is Indian. I'm the leader, I'm the entrepreneur. Very important. If there is, and there was no Jack Wells, I think GE will be collapsed. Only professional manager is not that enough. That's why I'm in the advisory board of Ministry of Education in Indonesia. You know that Minister of Education of Indonesia, no PhD, no professorship. Our president is, wow. He, he was an entrepreneur, Pak Jokowi. Want to reform all the University. We don't have higher education minister. So the higher Harvard Business School, MBA. That's why so many professors get angry in Indonesia. How can he directed us? We are professor, we are PhD. Wow. Pak Jokowi want to combine. That's why this model when I introduced to Director General of Higher Education, he liked it so much. Pak Erwawan, you have to be in the advisory council. 
DPT, they call it DPT. Now I remember, Dewan Pendidikan Tinggi for five years. Wah, wow, when the president will be changed, I will be still in the advisory council, but I don't know whether the, 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 the next president will be the same or not. The thinking with Pak Jokowi. So, this is Pak Jokowi thinking actually. Well. The same. And in Indonesia, we have what we call MBKM, Merdeka Belajar, Kampus Merdeka, means that you just need to learn five semester. You want to be engineer? Five semester. You want to be accountant? Five semester. Usually eight semester. The three semester, you can, you must go to the factory, you must go to whatever, whatever, whatever. and then we give you credit. The professor is angry. How can? Usually, I control it the semester. It depends on me. Now, only five semester. I can understand. Three semester, the student in Indonesia for bachelor degree, they can get credit from, not from academics. Go factory. That's why now Mark Plus, my company is 300 people after 25 years, and we are still number one. 100 is internship because they need our letter. You work for me six months, we give you good performance. You get credit. It's strange, right? That's why the professor is not so happy. Then, how can Hermawan is a failure story in education, but can give credit? And the other 100 is contract, under contract, and only one third of Mark Plus is the full time. I don't want the employee is too many. We need talent. If they don't prove to be a talent, you, be too, you better not to be our full time. I give you get good salary, good reward, good everything if you are a talent. Jackie 27 years with me. I'm lucky. And the other one, Taufik, is 28 years with me. Iwan, the co-author of 6.0, 17 years with me. I sent him to get MBA from Kellogg School of Medicine. You know, when he was studying in Kellogg School of Medicine one year, we thought English anything. He can get MBA from Kellogg and at the same time one year finishing writing marketing 3.0, 27 languages. Marketing 3.0. I just give the concept, I just the model and Philip Cotter is very good in detail. Jackie in detail. With Ivan in detail. Detail, very detail. And the publisher, the editor from publisher. Wow. 92 years old. And he said to me, you are still five years old, Hermawan. Life began at 70. In America, well, I began at 70. Because they are good, good lifestyle. In Indonesia, I cannot. Because 75 years already, diabetic for... 37 years. I'm nothing already, but this is the starting of my end. I always say that, the starting of my end. It's okay, it's okay. But I try very hard. I still want to continue three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then EM, one, two, three, and then that's all. But Philip Potter pushed me. You have to help to think with all concept until 2031. Why not 2030? Because I was born in 1931. He has a vision of 2031. Wow. I think he will not come again to ASEAN. No chance to see Philip Cotter. But still very good. Still very good. Yeah, We are lucky to have that picture. But almost every year I come, have lunch, and then refresh his, his mind with 
my concept, new balance scorecard, everything ya. Yeah. I maintain the concept. Oke, okay, so the conclusion of everything in yang Chinese and the second not addition, the second ya, second addition ya berarti the second the continuity of this one entrepreneur marketing to John Wiley already asked me all example must be Asian example. So I'm thinking CI Korea, PI uh, CI Korea, PI is Japan, EL is India, and PM is Singapore. Professor manager, your professor, Rikwan, you ask me to, to, to now you are everything CLP, but that is the basic. You are professional, and China is operation. Wah, wow, now they, they are in the middle, everything, from imitation to whatever, whatever, and then is creating and innovating and what, whatever, whatever, whatever. They are still go forward. So that is my next lesson, not, not next lesson, next, next content of the EM2. Maybe it will be published by... The first quarter 2024. So, dangers and opportunity, Weiji also. Professional, you need professional, right? Somebody, uh, factory without professional, die. That's why 95% of the startup dying because they don't have enough professional. They are only creative, in, only innovative, only entrepreneurial, only leader. Wow, if everybody leader, who will become manager? If everybody entrepreneur, who will be the professional? Everybody creative, who will be the productive? Everybody innovating, innovating. Even innovation must be improved, right? Innovation must be improved. When you target small market, it's okay. If you want entrepreneur, no, go to Target market, I invest in you. But when you go to bigger market, you will know that not easy. You must improve the innovation. Innovation improvement. Innovation improvement. Professional entrepreneurship. Leader, manager. And productivity and creativity. So, dangers and opportunity must be Dichotomy must be balanced. And then, now, <laughs> ASEAN matters. Now ASEAN is the president of Indo uh, ASEAN. Indonesia is the president of ASEAN for one year. This, this year. So, and the slogan is ASEAN matters. ASEAN is very important. Wow, our president remind everybody in the world. ASEAN, ASEAN, ASEAN. And our ambassador already managed to arrange the meeting between Prime Minister Lee Hsien Long with President Jokowi three times. Here yeah, only two and a half years. It's very hard to arrange. So his performance will be very good, but productivity and creative. Balance, balance. Leader and manager, not only KPI, KPI, but finally his KPI is good. Finally, if you are not creative, you, are, you will not be maximum productivity. If you are not entrepreneur, you are not a good professional. Believe me. If you are not a leader, you are not a good manager. But if you are only EL without PM, you will die also. So, need each other. So, Singapore and Indonesia matters. is epicentrum of marketing. Especially Singapore and Indonesia. The rich and the famous, right? And I talked yesterday with you that I will collaborate with MIS because MIS is like my brother. So many Singaporeans come to Indonesia think that, wow, the market is big. Next. Population? Maybe now 280, I don't know. Trillion? But GDP per capita still 4,000. 
I think Singapore is already 60,000 already, 15 times in Indonesia. So you are richer than me, 15 times in general. Yeah. Indonesia is only 4,000. But you see the market is, but culture diversity, Indonesia is not one country. 34 countries actually. And not only 34 countries, maybe 400 culture. Because even Solo and Jogja, Solo is the city of Pak Jokowi, Jogja is the city of Pak Sultan, the king of Jogja. Only one hour, one hour. But, is, but culture is different again. Like in Philippines, Mindanao and North and Cebu is different. Even Cebu, I'm Catholic, I know that there is a saint uh, what the same Cebu style only in Cebu only in Cebu you are not from Cebu yeah uh, from Mindanao <laughs> Luzon yeah different different the culture but Indonesia is worse so and language barrier also so that's why sorry to say that many Malaysian worry why because why we, we feel Indonesia? Because they are thinking that Malaysia is speaker Indonesia. Eh, in Indonesia is speaker Malaysia. No, 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 no. Different. Very different. So you must understand the culture. Statistic you can from the internet. So that's why culture, you understand the culture. And language is one of the culture. You think, you know, Jackie speak English very smooth, right? From Australia. Me? But he feel respected. If Singaporean come to, to him and then speak Bahasa Indonesia. That's why speaking Tagalog is very important in Philippines. Speaking Bahasa Indonesia is very important. Even not fluent. It's okay. And Japanese is very good. They always learn the language before they come. And some foreigners think that English is the only language in the world. You are wrong. Chinese will be the second world language. But remember, you want to be a real, real club like Jackie McDonald with rendang and everything. You must know the culture. That's why Next, my last slide, my last slide, next, oh, oh, not next, yeah. Uh, marketing is in Singapore, they give me Mark Hermawan Kartajaya School for Marketing, sir. Wow, thank you, using my name, Advanced Diploma in Asian Marketing Management. Pak Ambassador, they give my name, Hermawan Kartajaya School for Marketing, excellent. You give for Indonesian student, yeah. In student in Singapore or in Indonesia, so you can apply if you are Indonesian. You are Singaporean? No, no, only for Indonesian. And I offer them another collaboration two-day executive workshop by Mark Plus. Just yesterday, eating Michelin whatever outlet in what in Newton, yeah, Newton. Solo. When I have an apartment here many many years ago for ten years. I used to go to Newton. Yesterday, I missed Newton Circle. <sighs> Let's call up it. Today, executive workshop by Mark Prasidzi. Learn Indonesia market expert for more than 30 years because we established 1990. Market in Indonesia, understand cultural, and then maybe special company visit. So, I think, thank you so much. Now, 5.44. Thank you so much, and thank you for watching. And then after this, I will talk with the election committee. Yeah? So who is the, the local Singapore election committee? H HPLN? P PPLN? Oh, Papa. Oh, tak pikir Papa. Oh, Papa diplomat ya. Sorry, sorry. Papa KPRI. Potongannya kayak PPLN, Pak. Aku kiai ini KPU, Pak. Yeah, which one? So the two of you, please stand up. Ini KPPU-nya KPU. 
PPLN. So we we will meet ya, yeah? because they ask me to be the Kiai of KPU also. Ya, yeah? okay. Thank you so much. Thank you for coming. And if you have money, not so not so expensive, buy the book. Otherwise, it's a pity for to to you to to pass. There's a Wiley. Terima kasih. Thank you so much. CC. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. And ladies and gentlemen, that's the end of uh, today's program, the book launch of Entrepreneurial Marketing. Indonesia to the world by uh, Pak Hermawan Kartajaya and team. Thank you for your for attending uh, this book launch and please enjoy. We have uh, maybe early dinner. Uh, please enjoy early dinner uh, provided by the embassy. Uh, and I, we hope you enjoy uh, today's program and thank you very much for your participation. <laughs>